If you're a normal person tuning into the Olympics this year, you're probably in awe at all of the talent that you're seeing. I mean, we're talking about the best athletes in the world who've trained for years all competing against each other. It really is phenomenal to watch. But if you're a weird little freak, you know, you've probably had some different thoughts while watching the Olympics. Maybe you're wondering whether or not one of the athletes is a little bit too good, maybe suspiciously good, and you're perhaps then questioning if they're trans and have an unfair advantage. Now, that might sound a little bit bizarre, and if it does to you, congratulations, you're a normal person, but believe it or not, this was on the minds of certain people, specifically deranged transphobes who couldn't enjoy the Olympics because they were too busy transvestigating the athletes. So Italian boxer Angela Carini abandoned her fight with Algerian boxer Imane Khalif just 46 seconds into the match, and she then dropped to her knees and started crying and later said that she'd never been punched so hard. Now, maybe this is just me, but if I were an Olympian going up against a fellow Olympian, I'd expect them to be pretty damn good so you know i feel like this is kind of poor sportsmanship on karini's part but you can probably guess what some people had to say in the aftermath of this fight for example jk rowling tweeted could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement better the smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambition he just shattered. Logan Paul tweeted, This is the purest form of evil unfolding right before your eyes. A man was allowed to beat up a woman on a global stage, crushing her live stream while fighting for her deceased father. This delusion must end. Elon Musk shared a post from Riley Gaines, a swimmer turned anti-trans grifter who tied with trans swimmer Leah Thomas for fifth place, and what she said was, men don't belong in women's sports. Hashtag, I stand with Angela Carini. Let's get it trending. Tulsi Gabbard chimed in saying the consequence of the insane trans ideology is on full display at the Olympics. Biological men pretending to be women beating up female boxers with full IOC approval. In the name of equality, they are putting actual women in danger. And of course, Republicans turned it into an attack on Kamala Harris like the RNC. They tweeted, if elected, Kamala Harris will force every public public school in America to compel women to compete against biological men or risk their federal funding. Charlie Kirk chimed in calling it gender insanity and libs of TikTok chimed in saying Khalif failed gender eligibility tests at the 2023 World Championships. Now we're going to come back to that in a moment, but she adds, poor girl, she's trained her whole life for this. The Olympics sanctions violence against women. Now, even both Trump and J.D. Vance chimed in calling Khalif a man. Trump says that he will stop men from participating in women's sports. And there were so many more people calling Khalif a man online, but those were just some of the most prominent people with the largest platforms attacking her. Now, allow me to burst their bubble. Imane Khalif is not trans. She is a cis woman. But they're calling her a man because she's apparently too good at the sport that she's at the Olympics for. Now, if you're at the Olympics, I would imagine that you're pretty damn good in the first place, but apparently she's too good. So therefore, she can't be a cis woman. She must be a trans woman or a biological male as they'd say. Now, putting aside the mass bullying she's been subjected to, they're inadvertently inciting violence against her because in her country, being trans is literally a crime and the penalty is prison. Now, anti-LGBTQ plus policies are enforced at the local level in Algeria. So if she encounters a police officer who agrees with the hysteria that they're seeing online, you know, if they see bigot posts from JK Rowling and Elon Musk, she could get harassed. She could get assaulted, arrested, or worse. In Algeria, if you're even suspected of being queer, cops will sometimes arrest you for that, or they'll target you and harass you. So she's not just being subjected to cruelty and online harassment. These transphobes calling her a man could ruin her life. And this is all because she did what every Olympian goes to the Olympics to do, win. Now, this isn't her first time at the Olympics. Back in 2020 at the Tokyo Olympics, she was actually defeated by Irish boxer Kelly Harrington. But this was before the anti-trans panic, so nobody accused her of being a man back then. And nobody thought Kelly was fighting a biological male. But now that anti-trans hysteria is at its peak, no woman is safe from the scrutiny of transvestigators. And when it comes to Khalif, it's not like she's some superhuman who's invincible. I mean, she's a very talented boxer with more than 30 KOs under her belt. 
but she's also been defeated multiple times. She's been KO'd at least nine times, if I'm remembering correctly. But she's really good, so we're going to transvestigate her, apparently. If you are, you know, a woman, you better make sure that you are super feminine, ladies. Otherwise, the woman experts might start asking questions about you, too. That's how ridiculous this has all become. But when it comes to Khalif, speculation about her being trans started to go viral after the usual suspects like J.K. Rowling shared an article about how she, along with Taiwanese boxer Lin Yu Ting, failed their gender tests last year and weren't allowed to compete in the 2023 World Boxing Championship after the International Boxing Association said that they didn't qualify. So if they weren't eligible to compete in the World Boxing Championship, why would the International Olympic Committee allow them to compete in the Olympics? Now, the the answer to that question is very simple. It's because they met the eligibility standards laid out by the IOC. Protocol was followed and they were eligible to compete. They qualify based on the criteria set by the IOC and the sport itself. But when it comes to who can and can't compete, gender tests are used to determine eligibility because women like men, they have varying levels of hormones and organizations have different criteria to determine whether or not athletes fall in a range comparable to other competitors. So it's as fair as possible. But people are arguing that it must be unfair for them to compete in the Olympics if the IBA said that they had an unfair advantage due to their hormones on levels. But the opposite is actually true. The reason why they weren't allowed to compete in the World Championship of Boxing is actually really suspicious and downright unfair itself. As Christina Katarucci of Slate explains, Imane Khalif of Algeria and Lin Yu Ting of Taiwan, neither of whom is transgender, competed in the Tokyo Olympics in 2021 and have won medals at previous world boxing tournaments. But last year, the International Boxing Association, the governing body for the sport, disqualified Khalif and Lin during the tournament. According to an IO database, Khalif was removed from the 2023 championships just hours before she was set to compete for the gold medal because her elevated levels of testosterone failed to meet the eligibility criteria. Lynn competed and even won the bronze in the tournament, but the IBA took it back after she was found ineligible based on the results of a biochemical test that likely found high testosterone levels or chromosomal variants. So why the different treatment at the Olympics? The IOC and the IBA have different medical standards for competitors. The the two institutions parted ways in 2019 after the IOC stripped the IBA of its Olympic status amid concerns about its integrity, finances, and governance. The IBA president at the time, Uzbekistan's Gafur Rakimov, had incurred U.S. sanctions for his alleged participation in the heroin trade and in a Eurasian crime syndicate. The IOC was also wary of the association's dependence on funding from Gazprom, the Russian state energy firm. The IBA has since dropped Gazprom as a sponsor. Since the split, the IBA has taken on a new president, Umar Kremlev, who has accused Khalif and Lin of trying to fool their colleagues and pretend to to be women. But the IBA is no longer responsible for running the qualifying matches that lead up to the Olympics. The IOC does that, and it has found that Khalif and Lin are eligible competitors. Quote, all athletes participating in the boxing tournament of the Olympic Games Paris 2024 comply with the competition's eligibility and entry regulations, as well as all applicable medical regulations, the IOC said in a statement. In other words, the new president of the IBA doesn't think that these two cis women are are womenly enough and has effectively deemed them men because they failed their gender test. Even though they still are very much women, they just have varying levels of hormones compared to other women. And transphobes like JK Rowling and Riley Gaines latched onto that determination to send a transphobic mob their way because they agree with this man that these women aren't women enough to be considered women to be able to compete, even though they're both cis and they identify as cis. But yet, these are the same people calling trans rights activists misogynists when they're the ones agreeing with the man that these women aren't real women. You can't make this shit up. So the transvestigations of Khalif and Lynn, that's the result of a sort of anti-transhuman centipede where one person started saying that they weren't really women and then others started to parrot that person's false claim and so on and so forth. And that's how we arrived here. Now, putting aside the IBA president's bias, you can still make the case that Khalif and Lynn vary too much from other cis women for the competition to be fair. But if you're going to make that argument, you should probably be consistent and have that same standard for men as well. But the thing is that that's never the case. Even in instances where there is extreme biological variation between cis men, 
they're never transvestigated like female athletes, and there's never accusations that the competition is unfair, even when one man has a clear biological advantage, or in the case of Michael Phelps, multiple biological advantages. For example, David Dole shared this excerpt about the biological advantages that Michael Phelps has. Quote, a disproportionately vast wingspan, double-jointed ankles that give his kick unusual range, and in a quirk that borders on supernatural, Phelps apparently produces just half the lactic acid of a typical athlete, and since lactic acid causes fatigue, he's simply better equipped at a biological level to excel in his sport. Now, let me ask you this. Do you remember any of the sports fairness people calling out the biological advantages that Michael Phelps had when he was competing? I don't remember them saying anything about that. Has anyone made the argument that maybe it was really unfair that Muggsy Bogues, an NBA player who's only 5'3", had to compete with men twice his size? Of course not. Everyone just accepted the eligibility criteria for what it is because we all know instinctively that people are built differently. And in every single sport, people will have unique advantages and disadvantages. No sport is perfectly fair. Everybody knows that. But all of a sudden, there's this loud concern trolling about fairness, not because these people actually care about fairness as it relates to women's sports, but because they just hate trans people. That's what this is about. And their transphobia has become so widespread and far-reaching that they're now transvestigating cis women. And cis women are now oftentimes the victim of transphobia. But on the subject of fairness in sports, maybe it's time we rethink how to determine eligibility in the first place because the process in and of itself seems pretty unfair to me. It really seems unfair to certain women who I guess are considered less women if certain levels of hormone are detected that fall out of the range of what's expected of women. Christina Carter-Ricci continues, quote, the history of gender verification tests in athletics in which institutions assess athletes' biological markers with the intent of disqualifying anyone who diverges from an established gender standard is long and tragic. For decades, women who passed these tests got certificates of femininity that they had to present before every Olympic competition. Those who didn't pass because their bodies differed from what administrators deemed the feminine norm were exiled from their sports. In many cases, these athletes had no idea they had chromosomal variations until the Olympic gender verification authorities gave them their results right before their events and found them ineligible to compete. But human sex is not as clear cut of a binary as the guidelines from many athletic governing bodies would have us believe. As one endocrinologist told author Katie Barnes in Fair Play How Sports Shape the Gender Debates, what we think of as biological sex consists of the interplay and collective of your sex chromosomes, sex hormones, your internal reproductive structures, and what gonads you have, and your external genitalia. Many people diverge from the norm in any of these categories. Between 1 and 2% of people fall under the intersex umbrella. The point is that sex isn't as binary as we were led to believe, as the article points out. I mean, nobody's perfectly male or female or 100% masculine or feminine. It's more of a spectrum, and even if you fall firmly within most camp, as most people do, you're still going to vary in certain Certain ways. I mean, look at me. I'm a cis guy with a full beard, but if you just close your eyes and you listen to my voice, you know, it sounds a lot more feminine compared to other men. But then there are other men with deeper voices than me that can't grow a full beard like I can. We're all men, but we vary to certain degrees. Plenty of cis women watching this might have PCOS and might naturally be able to grow facial hair. That doesn't mean they're any less of a woman. It's just that they are built differently. People are different and athletes like all of us aren't homogenous, which is why more and more people are pointing out how dangerous transphobia is because it doesn't just affect trans people, even if they are obviously disproportionately affected. It also affects cis people as well, namely cis women. And that makes sense because once you start gatekeeping what does and doesn't constitute femininity and who qualifies, you inevitably subject cis women to those arbitrary standards as well. But transphobia doesn't affect all women equally. And I would highly recommend this video from Alurinati where she talks about how black women in particular are disproportionately affected by transphobia since people tend to attribute masculinity to blackness. And what she says there is really important because I don't think people fully understand how much transphobia and colorism and misogyny war intersect and affect people's perception of femininity. And on another note, this person shared other female 
female athletes who have all been transvestigated, and all of them are cis black women or women of color. And it's because society tends to ascribe masculinity to women with darker skin tones and femininity to women with lighter skin tones. It's why Michelle Obama was transvestigated, but Melania Trump wasn't. But you should hear this from Olay and not some pasty white guy. But I mean, Putting that aside, the irony about all of this is that a lot of these pathetic transphobes like Tulsi Gabbard and J.K. Rowling, they're all setting impossible standards for femininity that they themselves might not be able to adhere to. Like a lot of female athletes, they might unknowingly have higher levels of testosterone than other women. But regardless if they do or don't, it doesn't really matter. It's extremely weird to endlessly speculate about who is or isn't really a woman or what type of genitals they might have. I mean, putting aside the inherent bigotry and cruelty of transphobia, it's just fucking unhinged and weird. Go outside, touch grass, and get a fucking hobby because I can assure you, obsessing about trans people and cis women who may be secretly trans, that's not normal behavior. That's not normal for well-adjusted adults. So seek help. They can't even define what a woman is. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay pride.